CE. Again, this is Brock Hanlon. I also have with me Jeff Squires of Cisco Systems and one of the authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. Love doing these kinds of things. You always get to hear something new. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find us online at www.rce-cast.com. You can find all the old shows on there. See a list of people we're looking at talking to, and if you have contact for any of them, let us please let us know. You can also follow me on Twitter at at Brock Palin, and you can find that off of the website. Me too. I think I'm uh, at Jay Squires. And um, well, a little note to anybody who's listening out there, if there are things about MPI that you would love to see explained, let me know, and I'll, I'll do a little bit about it on my blog because just off the cuff, I did something about Eager Limits a week or two ago, and uh, Brock sent me back afterwards. He's like, hey, that was really useful. I can show that to all my users. And so you know, if uh, you, uh, gentle reader out there, have anything you want to hear about on the MPI sphere, uh, just uh, let me know. I'd be happy to talk about it. Yes, that, that was very useful. Also, uh, I'm going to be at the TerraGrid conference, which is in Salt Lake City this year. That is coming up in July. It is July 16th through 21st. Uh, if any of you guys are going to be there, be sure to track me down. I'll be walking around as a campus champion there representing the University of Michigan. Uh, so I'll be there if anyone else is going to be there. All right, so let's get on to our uh, topic today. I think you have a, uh, a special affiliation with our guests, so why don't you give the, the introduction honors here? Yeah, yeah. So our guest today is uh, Rodney Mock of Hyperlogic. He's actually going to be speaking to us uh, about a lot of the questions we have about Windows HPC server. I've personally never ran an HPC server setup. Uh, Rod's unique in that he actually got me into this business. Rod hired me back in 2004. 2004, 2005, as a student employee at U of M, uh, running a bunch of Mac and Linux clusters there. So this is how I got started in this business. So I owe Rod a lot for getting me on track in a great industry. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Brock. I said uh, I knew you would be an excellent uh, employee, and I'm glad to see that uh, you're now running the podcast with a small, uh, small world. And I also worked with Jeff in the past on Lamb and uh, then Open MPI. So it's got to be great yeah. to see you guys. Yeah, we go way back. And, and was, before we were recording, I was saying uh, people need to stop using Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> please, yeah. please, please upgrade to Open MPI and stop asking us questions about Lamb. Yeah, you can do like the uh, Microsoft IE6 web page, and they'll stop using IE6. You just yeah, make a stop right. using LAM, and you're like, you can pinpoint where in the world people are still using LAM. So. <laughs> well, by the by, the kind of a segue here, um, we're talking to Rodney here because he his company does a lot of consulting around Windows HPC, and Windows HPC is not something that a lot of us know about. So it'll be interesting to hear about it because. Uh, at least my particular bias is mostly focused on Linux and other posix -y kinds of OSs um, and the HPC in those arenas. Now, Windows HPC is getting more popular, so we figured uh, let's hear something about it. So, Rodney, I wonder if you could give us a little of the background here about why you can uh, talk to us about this stuff. Sure. Yeah, we have a consulting company, Hyperlogic. So we do a lot of Linux consulting. Uh, we also do Microsoft HPC consulting, mostly for manufacturing, uh, automotive, because uh, we're out of Michigan. So we do a lot of CA, CFD, a lot of commercial off-the-shelf shelf apps. Uh, we're an HP, HPC Elite partner. So we put together clusters, support them, manage them. Uh, and for Microsoft, uh, I, you know, definitely, like you said, Linux has been, uh, you know, kind of the de facto standard for a long time. And but as Microsoft uh, came out with their stack, they're now in the third version. It's gotten to the point where it's actually uh, very interesting, and we've seen a lot of customers in the uh, manufacturing space adopting it for different types of uh, point solutions. And uh, even in uh, larger companies in Tier 1 automotive, we're starting to see a Microsoft HPC server. So we've been doing uh, – we have tools and solutions in that space. We do development and consulting. So I uh, thought we could come today, you know, having a kind of a mixed background. We see both sides of the fence of – Done operations development, we could maybe hopefully you know uh, talk about talk to the H Microsoft HPC space for your listeners that might be interested in kind of what's different or what what is what is Microsoft doing in in this arena. I should stress that uh, Rod's a good candidate for this because as I mentioned at Michigan he was running all Linux and Mac clusters so and he still does Linux quite a bit of Linux still actually right Rod. Yeah, yep, yep. We still do a lot of Linux. Uh, so, you know, it, uh, uh, we can talk about like what, you know, what is a decision point uh, when you go to, uh, when you're trying to decide Linux or Windows, you know, often, um, you know, there, there's, a, there's some criteria that may make one more preferable over the other depending on your situation. 
Well, yeah, actually, let's dive into that. I mean, what, what, why would a customer choose Microsoft HPC? And <laughs> I, I don't mean that nearly as confrontational as that sounds, but, you know, a, a big chunk of the HPC industry is Linux. So what would lead somebody to the, to the Windows solution instead? Well, often what happens when we go to a customer's site, the engineers, maybe they're using a Linux cluster, they don't have necessarily Linux expertise, or they face problems like they'll have, they'll create an input file on Windows, and they have to deal with like Unix to Windows line conversion, all those like little things, ha having to FTP files back and forth. And so the, the Linux, uh, for the end user, the engineer, they almost don't care, right? They're just trying to get their job done, whatever is the easiest way to get the job done. So often that barrier is uh, uh, that Windows reduces that barrier a little bit if the engineers are Windows focused. Now other shops, uh, the engineers all want to use Linux, so it just depends on the environment. The same thing goes on the flip side the, for the IT administrator. Uh, often they, if they don't have Linux skills and Linux comes in, we often bring Linux into a Windows only shop in the past. And uh, you know, IT, gen, you know, corporate IT is has maybe a more difficult time handling Linux than they do um, than they do a Microsoft solution. Now, I should say that just because you have a Microsoft solution in place doesn't mean that having Windows skills makes you an HPC person. You definitely need to learn. You know the all of the part of HPC, but that does lower the barrier of entry for folks who, if they if they aren't, aren't familiar with HPC and they aren't familiar with Linux, it's just at least one of those two you knock out. You knock out if you uh, want to consider HPC. And kind of the third realm uh, that's new is that if you want to like utilize, a lot of companies now are going to Windows Seven. So you see a lot of Windows Seven workstations out there, and especially in engineering, these things are almost like mini supercomputers. I mean, they got. Eight cores, a whole bunch of RAM. You know what they they were more powerful than the clusters we used to run at U of M back in the day, and they're sitting under someone's desk. Uh, HPC Server lets you basically schedule on those boxes seamlessly, so you can use it even if you have a Linux cluster. You could use it as a point solution to do cycle scavenging on Windows uh, boxes, and you could do this in the past with third-party solutions, but it's uh, it's way way easier now with HPC Server than it other ever was before with uh, like having to buy a, a third-party app to do it. So a lot of people are used to seeing Windows machines, you know, a desktop, that kind of interface. Uh, is there anything about running an HPC, uh, a Windows HPC server setup that is going to feel very desktop-y if you've been running Linux things before? Well, kind of the dream of HPC Server is that the, the, the you actually submit from your native application, and you should never really even realize that you're submitting to a cluster necessarily. So applications like Ansys, there's some uh, good apps out there that do have that you know dream realized. They're using Microsoft APIs. They submit to the cluster. It's, it's basically transparent. If you want to go back to uh, where your application doesn't have that level of integration, then it's not that different than using uh, a Linux. There's a command line API. You can do like job submit. Um, you know, the, the big difference between how you submit maybe to an HPC cluster versus a Linux cluster is what are you using? Instead of writing bash, maybe you're using batch files or PowerShell. Um, so... So it's definitely a little bit different skill set, but it's not vastly different. There's a command line you can you don't have to use the GUI to use the GUI tools, though they have all GUI interfaces, web portals, uh, standalone thick client, you know, command line. So whatever you prefer, they don't you can choose choose any of the above. Okay, so that sounds like they've actually reproduced a lot of stuff that we figured out um, in other batch environments for a long time. What about actually moving code over that was originally developed in a Unix Linux environment? Do they have POSIX compatibility? How hard is it? Well, they do have a. Uh, there's this thing called SUA, which is basically a full POSIX compliant um, uh, implementation on top of the uh, Microsoft kernel. So you can install that. It has like aux, sed, grep. You can basically compile any application with very little change, but that's not really the way. If you're going to do that, you're almost. I think you might as well stick with a uh, stick with Linux. Um, but if uh, there's a lot of toolkits like PGI makes some nice tools that uh, allow you to easily, you know, take a pure uh, a Linux Unix heritage code and make it work on Windows. Um, you know, a lot of the changes are just like uh, on Windows you have .obj instead of .o. You have to change your make files slightly for that. Uh, PGI actually has a pretty good tutorial on on uh, migrating uh, over some classical HPC codes over to Microsoft, just to kind of show you what the steps were that you had to uh, do. You know, what did they have to you know change? Uh, so it, it's a it's but you know. It's